Hey guys, my name is Pastor Vic Garcia. I'm the pastor here at North Dallas Church. In a few moments, you're going to be watching what our Sunday morning service looks like. If you're looking for a home church, our service kicks off at 11.30 a.m. And we're located here right off of I-35 and Valley View. We're easy to find. This is a church where you can come as you are. You don't have to sugarcoat who you are or anything like that. Come as you are. We'd love to meet you. We'd love to get to know you. And we can't wait to see you. God bless you. One generation to another, we declare the famous name of Jesus. Jesus celebrate his resurrection power. Gave his life so we could live as freedom. He is alive. He is alive. In every language, every language is the same. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Come on. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Hey, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus is alive. to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and I don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked into the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. And then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen laying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels there. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize who it was. He asked her, 
woman, what are you crying? What are you looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, You have taken the Lord of the throne. If you have took him, can you please tell me where he's at so I can go get him? Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic. Rabbi. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. I'm going to talk about what is resurrection life. The first thing is I walk in victory because my sins are forgiven. The debt is paid. The ransom has been fulfilled. If you think about, you know, Hollywood and the movies that happen when you see, you know, stuff like, you know, kidnapping and the ransom and all that stuff. You're held hostage to that. You're held hostage to whatever that person is demanding. And until that is paid, then you're not going to be free. And that's the same thing that God did for us. We were held hostage. We were held in bondage. But because of what God did for us, we are free. We're set free. We're whole. That means we can walk down the street and preach the word of God. That means we can come into a building like this and worship and lift our hands. Because not everywhere it is a place where you can do that. If you notice the stuff that's been happening in the world, the stuff, the bombings that happened in Egypt a couple of weeks ago or last week at a church, that's awful. You know, thank God that we don't live in an area where we have to worry about all of that stuff. Because God really has truly paid the debt for us. Number two is I walk in victory because I have unfringed faith. In verse 14, it says, for, there is, for if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is useless and our faith is useless. I can promise you today that your faith is not useless. You know, faith is one of the hardest things that we, that we go through. It's a daily struggle because it's something that we can't see. Now, if you're like me, when I was growing up, I grew up in church. My parents were pastors at a very, very small church back in Kansas. And then I moved to Amarillo, and I served my, my father-in-law's church for 14 years before I moved here. I've been in church my entire life. And I preached. I said this one time. I said, you can be in church and the farthest away from church all at the same time. Meaning we go to church because sometimes it's a routine. We go to church because it's Sunday or it's Wednesday or it's Thursday. And we go to church because mama said to go to church. Or we go to church because we want to see that there's maybe hope for our kids that they won't be so bad anymore. Every part of that could be a routine. But because we are tangible people and we have to see the things before we believe it, I was the same way. I grew up, I, I grew up people, I heard people say all the time, you got to have faith. You got to have faith. You got to have faith. And I'm like, okay, well, where is it? I'll go get it right now. So you stop telling me that. But it, I didn't understand what it was until I started getting older and I went through some stuff. I had to go through some stuff to understand that if I really do put all of my cares unto God, if I cast all my cares to him, God really will help me. And I had to go through some tough things before I figured that out. But it's the faith. I know that if you have faith today for whatever you believe, God is going to meet you right there. He's going to meet you no matter what state of life you're in. Whether you're in, in, in school or whether you're trying to find a new job, whether you're trying to get a promotion, whether you're trying to have a family, whether you're looking for a husband, whether you're looking for a wife, whatever it is. God knows your heart. God knows what it is that you need. And I'm here to tell you today that if you just say to yourself, I believe God, I trust God, and there is nothing anybody that can do or say that is going to make me not believe that. Do y'all believe that this morning for yourself? Number three is I walk in victory because I have a blessed future. Do you believe that you have a blessed future? Raise your hand if you believe you have a blessed future. A lot of times we feel like, 
A blessing has to be in a monetary form. But a blessing can be health. A blessing can be your job. A blessing can be family. A blessing, it doesn't always have to be tied to an executive level job with an executive house, with an executive car, with executive perks and all that. That, that is not what, what that means. If you're blessed, if, you're, if you were able to wake up out of your bed and walk into your shower and take a shower and walk into your closet and get dressed and drive in your car and get here today, you are blessed. It doesn't matter what your bank account looks like. It doesn't matter what everything around you looks like. The essentials you have. It's a blessing to know that our sins are forgiven. If you can only imagine, when somebody used to sin back in the day, let's just say adultery. If a woman committed adultery, you know what they would do to her? They'd grab her, they'd put her against the wall, and they would stone her. Now, for those of you guys that may live a lifestyle of maybe smoking marijuana, I am not talking about that kind of stoning. I'm talking about stones, and they're picking them up, and they're throwing them at you. That was the price if you sinned for that particular thing. Now, today, you don't have to raise your hands. You don't have to do anything. But if you're living a life of sin, if you're living a life of maybe you're one way in public and you're another way had to take him to the emergency room and we had to pay all this money to get him bandaged up and fixed up and um, it was awful but when I was sitting there in the emergency room and I sat there and I said man God I really hope that there is not anything else wrong with him like I hope like there's no internal bleeding or that he didn't have like his head hit or whatever you know, I just thank God right there because at least he was alive. And before me, I even knew everything that had happened. But, you know, he's good. He's, he's hurting. But even in that, I got to thank God because it could have been worse. So whatever it is you're going through today, if you'll just say to yourself, you know what? It could have been worse. I could have probably lost my job or I probably could have got into that wreck or that wreck could have really done me wrong. I could have you know, broke my leg or even been paralyzed or whatever. But God graced you. And I think of a person, there was a story of a woman. She was struggling pretty bad and she needed finances. And it was a cold day. And she was afraid because there was a knock on the door and she, she, she thought it was her, her landlord that was needing the money for the rent because she was past due. And if you've ever been there before, because I have plenty of times where I have more bills than money. Has anybody ever been there? (laughs) And I, that's kind of happened to me. And you hear the knock and you're like, oh, nobody move. Nobody say nothing. Don't like, don't do nothing. Like, and like you hear it again. And you're like, no, I'm not going to go answer the door because I know what it is. So the knock stopped coming. The lady, several weeks passed, you know, she, she was having a hard time. She was at the grocery store and one of her friends comes up and says, hey, God placed it in my heart to go to your house and to give you this money so you could pay your rent. But you weren't home. And immediately, the lady said to herself, I should have answered the door. I should have answered the door. And because she didn't answer the door, she wasn't able to receive what God had sent to her. And I want to tell you this morning that if you feel a little tug in your heart this morning, that's God knocking at your door. That's God saying, hey, I really would love for you to answer the door. I really would love for you to let me in because I have something really special for you. I got something that you need. I got something that you couldn't even fathom that 
that will bless your life. When I was in Amarillo, I had a business, and my business was going very good for a long time, and then I lost my business. I went from making very, very, very good money to making hardly no money. And if you're the kind of person that, like me that kind of likes nice things, you know, when you live a certain lifestyle and you make a certain amount of money, you start to kind of live at the level of where you're at. I know this because when I didn't have money, I had to live at that level. And it was humbling. But I tell you something. That even when I went through all that, even when I heard the knock on the doors, I was terrified. I had to sit in my apartment and watch the tow truck repossess all three of my cars on the same day. Humbling, y'all. I went from having cars that I had picked out from the showroom floor to not having any money at all, not having any car. And, I, and my wife, who wasn't even my wife at the time, said, I'm going to buy you a car. She went to go buy me a $1,500 1992 Acura Legend four-door with no paint on it. It didn't have any AC. I was still big back then, so I was hot. It was hot in the summer. It didn't have any AC. The seats were cracked. It was black interior, so it was hot. And I just remember getting into the car and remembering everything that God had blessed me with and how I didn't honor God. Mind you, I was still at church. I was still behind that keyboard. I was still praising and worship leader. I was sitting there praising and, act, and acting like I had it going on. I didn't pay my tithes faithfully. I didn't serve with my whole heart. It was a routine. And you know what? When you go through those things, when you have that kind of heart, God has to humble you. And it's not an easy or fun thing. But I'm here to tell you today that if maybe you had gone through some of that stuff, or maybe you're going through it, you're in a place this morning where God can say, hey, there's a second chance for you today. I can still work with you. I want you to answer the door. I want you to answer the call. I want you to open your heart up to me. And if that's you, I want everybody to stand up. You see, because the lady didn't open the door, she wasn't able to receive what God had for her. The outcome could have been totally different if she would have just opened the door. So I don't know what you're struggling with this morning. I don't even know if you're struggling with it. If you have everything going for you, praise the Lord. But if you don't, I want you to know that there is a God who loves you. There is a God that says, it doesn't matter to me what you've done in the past. It doesn't matter to me what you did yesterday. Because the truth is, here's the truth. This is the truth, that it doesn't matter how you started the race, it matters how you finish the race. You see, when somebody runs a marathon, they could be toned up and ready to go, but something may have happened between the starting point and the finish line. But I've seen videos where somebody maybe falls and they scrape their leg and they can barely do it. But what do they do? They have determination in their heart. They get up and they finish the race. I've not always been perfect, church. Some of you guys know me from back when I used to be not that great of a person. And let me tell you something. If God can do it for me, he can do it for you. He can do it for you. Sean, he can do it for you. Christian, he can do it for you. He can do it. Abraham, he can do it for you. He can do it for you because he did it for me. Am I qualified to be up here? No. Did I go to school to be up here? No. But you know what I did? I answered the call. And because I answered the call, God graced me. He said, you know what, Vic? You don't have what it takes by yourself 
but you have what it takes through me. And if you trust me, if you answer the call, I'm going to give you everything that you need. So with every head closed this morning if, and every head bowed, I said every head closed. I meant every eye closed and every head bowed. Every Sunday I say to myself, man, I hope I don't mess that up. And I just did. But y'all know I'm, I'm real just like you. So if you'll bow your heads, please. You know, a lot of times Easter or Christmas service, it can be an emotional thing. Like there's an emotional attachment. And sometimes the emotion wears off, just like anything else. When you go to a game, you're excited. Man, you're pumped. You're excited. You're, you're so happy. But the next day, you got to go to work. You're not walking into work. Yeah, all right, man, we won. Can you believe that? Can you believe how he hit that shot? No, you're not doing that because emotion wears off. But when you have an encounter with God... When you allow God to come into your heart and say, you know what? I need to do something in your life today. And when you say that, when you truly, truly open your heart and you say, I need to change some things in my life and I need it to happen today. When you make that decision, it's a decision now. It's not emotion. When you make the decision. To say, I'm not going to do things I'm not supposed to do to do more. I'm not going to do the things that hinder God's presence into coming into my life. I don't want to do anything to offend God. I don't want to do anything to upset God because I need his blessing. I want his blessing. I want other things and I know that I can get them through God because God loves me and he wants everything for me. So if that's you this morning. One of the hardest things to do is to take a step of faith. And I know this because I was there. Where you're standing, I was standing. And the hardest thing to do is to say, watch, you guys look at me real quick. The hardest thing to do when you're standing there, and maybe you're standing there with your spouse, or maybe you're standing there by yourself, and like, you know, you're, there's, there's just a lot of uncertainty. The hardest thing to do is for you to say, excuse me, I need to go up to the front and receive something from God. Because you're afraid of what the person standing next to you is going to say. Let me tell you something. When God was chained to that post and they were whipping him and beating him and spitting on him and saying all these awful things to him, he had you in mind. He had you in mind. It don't matter the dirt you've done. It don't matter the mess you've made. God is the God that loves you. He's a God that's going to cover you and say, when you think of getting covered, I think of somebody like is cold and somebody comes and wraps a warm blanket around you. That is God's love. So if you need a touch from God this morning, I want you to take a step of faith and I want you to come up here to the front because I want to pray for you. I need to pray for you. Let's line up like this. You're good, Miss Amber. Don't let that voice in your head say, you don't need to go up. You don't need to go up. You got it. It's all good. Your car ain't going to break. Your relationship ain't going to end. Don't let that voice inside your head say that. Because that is the devil saying that you don't need God. And that's what he wants. And I'm here to tell you right now that if you make the step of faith, God is going to meet you right there. Because God loves you. And he said, if you will trust me, if you will take the step and trust me, I'm going to fulfill every promise that I made to you. Well, you might say, well, God didn't promise me anything. Oh, he didn't. He didn't promise you life. He didn't promise you abundance. He didn't promise you a long life. He didn't promise that he was going to keep the devourer away. He didn't promise all of those things. He promised that. 
Whether or not you know that because maybe you haven't read the Bible enough, that's okay. Because trust me, listen, trust me. Before I became a pastor, I didn't read the Bible that much. But I read it now a lot. And there's promises there that God has for me. And if I line myself up with the word of God and I say, Lord, I'm lining myself up. I don't want to do the things that I used to do anymore because I want your blessing. I don't want to do the things anymore because I love you. I don't want to do the things anymore because I believe that you're going to do thing, something special for me. And when you decide that that's what's going to happen, when you make that choice and say, God, I trust you that fast. God is going to change that situation around. Hey guys, once again, it's Pastor Vic Garcia. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. Connect with us on social media under Facebook and Instagram. Search North Dallas Church. Go there if you have a prayer request, send me a message there. I'd love to connect with you and pray with you there. Also, if you want to support our ministry, you can go to our website under NorthDallasChurch.com. Click the Give tab and you can give there securely. Once again, I want to just thank you for tuning in. If you're able to come and join us on a Sunday morning, we kick off right at 11.30 a.m. Uh, we're located at 2436 Valley View Lane. All that information will be on the bottom of your screen. God bless you, and I hope to see you soon.